YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook and a few other places. And up here we have TikTok. Hi, TikTok. Um, well, thank you. For the first compliment I saw was first comment I saw was a compliment. How sweet of you to say so. Um, hi, Louisiana. How are you? Tell me where you're watching from. If you're just coming on board on my other social media, let's see. I have two Facebook pages, a LinkedIn, YouTube, Periscope, Twitter. Uh, I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh. I'm known as America's relationship expert because I have been talking about and writing about the science of love for quite a few decades. I've written three books on relationships. Um, I am a psychology professor. I'm not a therapist, but I love to share the science of love to people as I read it. So let me open up the comments. If you are watching on any of the other social media, it's always nice for you to tell me where you're watching from. It's a pleasure. Up here on TikTok, we got Mississippi, we got Sacramento, we got Hudson, Florida. Interesting. Belize. Wow. Uh, okay, so here's, we're going to start on YouTube. I have a great question here from, let me see if I say it right. Amitab? Amitab, did I say it right? Hi, Lissandra. How are you? Good to see you. We're going to see you in my Patreon Zoom room in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, Amitab, forgive me if I've said your name incorrectly, asks, hello, doctor. The thought of marriage brings fear in me as I worry my partner could change after marriage and be controlling. Help. Well, I want to say this. First of all, everybody is afraid to get married. Everybody is afraid to make decisions that may feel like they're irreversible. Of course, no decisions actually irreversible except, of course, death or birth. But um, fear of the future can create bad things. I mean, I think life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. I want you to stay in the present. I want you to keep reminding yourself what you love about your partner, why you love your partner. And I want you to instead be an optimist and imagine the best. I mean, do you have any indication they're suddenly going to change and be controlling? Or go to your therapist and find out why you fear being controlled, right? What's going on there? Um, anyway, so that's my suggestion to you. If you have other relationship questions, you can put them up. Oh, aloha from Maui. I love Maui. Hana is my favorite place on the planet, I think. Um, how do we shake old relationship scripts during a fight? That's an excellent question because you know, life is a series of repeats, right? It starts with our early childhood conflict uh, with our parents and growing, and then we become we get this model for love in our heads and, and a script, and we fall into these kinds of scripts. I think it's important that we stop, breathe, and think, and ask ourselves how questions. How could I say it differently? How could this feel differently now? How can we solve this? By, get, by asking yourself how questions, you pull yourself out of the emotional part of your brain and more into your problem-solving prefrontal cortex. Um, this thing is on a weird angle. Sorry, I'm trying to fix my other computer. Hang on, it's sliding. It's literally sliding away on me. Slip sliding away, slip sliding away. All right, uh, anyway, give me your questions, guys. You have some relationship questions? Now, of course, it's hard for me to see TikTok. Why is it so difficult when you come from Mexico to find a relationship with an American woman? Well, obviously it doesn't matter what countries we're talking about here, there often are cultural differences, right? And so I think the important thing though is to not try to mold yourself into somebody's new culture, but be clear about who you are and what you want, what love means to you, what commitment means to you, what relationships mean to you, etc. cetera, and um, be honest. Um, I'm gonna slide this up now because the other one's blocking it and I can't see. Okay, here's a good question. Um, Patricia's got a good one too on Facebook. Patricia says, what do I do if your partner triggers you? Okay, so here's the important thing. There's no such thing as somebody triggering you, right? Because that's assuming that you have an emotional trigger that you cannot control and that they have an ability to pull the trigger. The truth is you need to step back and working with your therapist, find better coping strategies against those vulnerable moments, right? It's not that your partner triggers you. It's that you're reactive when certain things happen. 
just by changing the dialogue so they can understand it's about you and your reaction, not them doing something you, to you, helps, I think, to so that you can be more in control. Um, okay, Justin's got a good question. Why is 28 the best age for men to get married? Does the longer you delay marriage help in any way? There's no rule that says 28 is the best age to get married. The research shows that 28 is the average age for first time marriage for men in America. Now, average age, that means some people are getting married at 22 and some people are getting married 35, whatever. Um, and that also includes rural populations uh, who tend to get married earlier, um, college educated as well as high school educated. Uh, people who don't go to college tend to get to the business of family making earlier, right? So. Um, just because something is an average doesn't mean it's the best. I say that you're ready for marriage, certainly as a man, when you feel that your education is complete, when you feel that you have some level of financial stability or at least a regular job, uh, when you're maybe ready to think about making a family within the next few years. And that can happen at different ages for different people. So there's not one age. Yes, there is research to show that delaying the onset of the sexual relationship and spending at least a year or two before you get married is a little bit divorce preventative, right? Marrying too quickly uh, increases your likelihood of divorce. All right, let me go back up to TikTok. Um, oh, tips for coping. My boyfriend is deployed and I can't talk to him for weeks at a time. Well, you're talking to somebody who has trauma around that because my dad was in the Navy and he was gone most of my childhood. Um, very difficult, very, very difficult. I will say this about, I was talking one time, I met a, a cha an army chaplain and uh, he was talking about what kinds of mental health problems uh, or counseling do military personnel consult him? And he told me that it's almost always about relationships. And he thinks part of the problem right now is not just the distance and the deployment and the lack of communication. It's actually the opposite because there is so much technological ways to communicate that the partner at home is expecting them to maintain their life at home. Like if they're married, what have you done for me lately? Have you helped the kids with the homework? Have you been on the phone with them? Have you paid that bill, et cetera? Like they're expected to have their mind at a time where they're under great stress, often if they're anywhere near the front lines in life and death situations. And so it's very difficult for them to take care of their life at home. So I wanna say that. So it's about you learning to self-console, learning to surround yourself by friends and family who will keep you busy and happy, um, not friends who will be a threat to the relationship. Why are you waiting for him? I have a better guy I can fix you up, but not those kinds of friends. Um, the friends who are there with you to help you get through it. And you really want to ask yourself, what kind of support does my partner need there? Because your partner needs you now more than anything. Uh, it's an interesting question about finance. I mean, uh, oh, I got a couple good ones here over on, but let me just see. Um, okay, let me go to Lysandra first. How do you learn trust if you have attachment issues? Well, the best way to heal an attachment injury is the way I did, which is working with a licensed therapist. Um, I was in therapy for many, many years so that I could talk about my anxiety with her instead of you know, taking it out on other people. But like anything else, you learn things through baby steps. You, when you give to someone, you wait for a reciprocation before you give more. Whether you're giving your time, your attention, your money, whatever it may be. So, the most important thing when you're learning to both have boundaries and trust somebody is look for that reciprocation. Now, it shouldn't be a very clear tit for tat. I did this. Now you need to do that. I did this. You, but just inside your mind, in the back of your mind, just kind of ask yourself, do you feel that your needs are being met as well as you taking care of somebody else? And do it in baby steps and also talk about it. Tell the person, hey, I've I've had trouble trusting people. A lot of people have really let me down. So give me some time. Um, and let's, you know, the small things you do that to reassure me will help heal me. 
have that conversation. Uh, okay, this person says, "My hi, Dr. Wendy, my family is wealthy and my girlfriend's family is not wealthy, but they love me and she treats me so well. Is her financial situation a red flag? Look, there have been plenty of relationships from different socioeconomic classes, right? Usually the problem isn't the money, it's the taste, right? It's like, there are people who are like, I can't hang with that person. Their decorating taste or their food taste is not mine, right? Um, I Obviously, your family's going to ensure that if you get married, you're going to have a good solid prenuptial agreement. I don't think the fact that somebody doesn't have money is necessarily a red flag. It's about the value that you or they place on money. So a relationship is an exchange of care, and that care can take so many forms. It can be um, sexual care. It can be uh, instrumental care when someone's sick. It can be emotional support. It can be um, uh, you know, intellectual stimulation. It can be childcare, domestic responsibility care, and it can be financial care. So there may be other ways that she's able to give to you. You know, for instance, when I first started dating my boyfriend, he was taking me out to some very luxurious dinners and I, I didn't want to sort of demand him and go, let me pay. So I would take great care and time to pack beautiful picnic baskets and take him to parks and out in the wilderness and we'd have our picnics. And that was my way to share. I was giving of my time and my talents as well as obviously some food costs, but different than a restaurant. So don't always count just a tit for tat. Um, okay, I want to tell everybody that I only do this for 15 minutes every Wednesday night because I'm on my way to my exclusive Patreon Zoom room. I think Lissandra's going to be there. I see a few other people from my Zoom room here. Um, so if you want to join and come on, there's lots of time. I do it every Wednesday night. It is uh, patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. And then I can meet you. You can have your camera on. We can meet in person. It would be lovely. Um, anyway, good to uh, good to see everybody again. Uh, make sure you listen to the Dr. Wendy Walsh show every Sunday. You can, if you're not in Los Angeles, if you're in Los Angeles, it's on KFI AM 640. You can listen online, kfiam640.com. You can also download the iHeartRadio app and listen to it live on Sundays or anytime during the week because it's always there. It's my pleasure to be with you. Um, come on over to my Patreon. It's a lot of fun. Patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. Bye.